Oh, shoot. All righty. What is up, everybody? How many people do we have in the chat? 35 people currently watching. That's a new all time high for us. Thank you to each and every one of you. I'm going to personally write a, a thank you note to all of you guys for tuning in and listening to Michael and I babble on about whatever the heck is going on in the market. But uh, we have some exciting updates for, for everybody. Um, for starters, I'm going to give another plug for the Discord. Uh, for anybody who hasn't been able to get in touch with me or Bill or Michael or anybody, um, the Discord is a great spot. Um, my DMs get absolutely flooded, so I have a really hard time responding to all of you, not because I don't love each and every one of you, but because it's, it's just hard to, to follow through and keep track. And, and Discord is just easier. So uh, once again, I posted the Discord link. On, it's my pinned tweet on my profile. Um, there's been a lot of really good talk and chatter in there. I'm always in there messaging back and talking to people. Um, a lot of good stock talk, a lot of good you know, personal talk and catching up about whatever you want to catch up on. And uh, one of the things that we're going to launch pretty soon here, which is also going to be launched via the, the Discord, is a stock pitch competition. Um, these are all tentative details, details to follow. Um, but Mike and I are super excited about it. Um, Mike, you want to maybe just quick run through a couple of the details about it? or Yeah, so we were just thinking we might get um, a lot of us, I think, have more, uh, at least on my side, I'll, I'll say us by, by me, have a little more degenerate kind of ways of trading. And I don't know that we're going to change that much. And Steven's more kind of uh, classically trained. And uh, so I, I kind of had an idea where, you know, maybe we'll start with... Uh, you know, have a race, see which, which side wins, have several, I don't want to say D gens, but, uh, several D gens, uh, take on Steven and, uh, see who actually makes more money. And, uh, it'd be a good case study to see, you know, kind of follow along, um, and see who makes money and who doesn't and see if there's any trends. And, uh, I think it could be cool. Exactly. D, D gens versus the fundamentals, you know, we're, we're going <laughs> to set it up um where it's um all of you guys again me and and maybe bill will create a profile too it'll be a fun little stock com stock pitch competition we're debating on on the timeline and, and how long it's going to go from what the details are um but it'll likely be something that you know we're going to be um following up on keeping track of of who's the leading performers are what they're what they're choosing and, and obviously hopefully bring some of the leading performers on and, and have them talk about their picks so i think it could be a lot of fun I think Michael thinks it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm sure Bill thinks it's going to be a lot of fun. So we'll see who can win in, in the short term or the long term. And, uh, you know, it should be a lot of fun. So obviously I'm, stay tuned for details. We just came up with that this morning. Like you guys know, this is our, our third official show. So um, things are, you know, we're still, you know, greasing the, the gears here. So stay with us I, here, but, but details to follow. I wish we would have started the competition yesterday because I wrecked it <laughs> yesterday. Um, I actually was kind of hesitant to... Uh, to post this right but i had a theory a pretty degenerate in my opinion um of a theory um oh, no, and, don't, uh, don't look at all the feed pics i send michael as the ends <laughs> so yeah so i i posted this so a lot of people don't like ftds um but I was just looking at it and I think it's something that, that shouldn't necessarily be ignored. You know, it, it, you know, the market's pretty corrupt. So who knows whether it actually happened, but I was just like, I, I went back to see like, well, with the last, like there were 700,000 FTDs that we're going to cover. And so I was like, well, I wonder looking back the last time there was a lot, I mean, this is for AMC. There was uh, five and a half million FTDs that were covering on, um, on January 22nd. And so I looked at that and I was like, oh, there's a pretty big bump. And then there was another 112,000 and then there's another bump and another 500,000 and then there's another bump. And so I was like, well, I wonder what 700,000 is going to do, right? So I posted this, um, was this Tuesday night? Um, Cause it's on, you know, my radar. And uh, so I had, uh, so I had all my line. So I, I, I drew that this is what I thought it was going to do, right? The, it was basically, I think the chart kind of sees like these decision points, basically, like the algorithms have like a certain date when 
um, announcement's going to go one of two ways. And I, I, I don't even know enough about AMC to know what announcement that was supposedly waiting for. Um, but I figured there, it looked like the, the chart was narrowing to some sort of decision. And uh, so I figured it was going to go up right from this decision point to that decision point. And uh, so it was pretty crazy to then watch it, it do this. Right. And I, and I then said, well, I don't know if like, um, uh, you know, so I, I, if you bought in right here, that was over a hundred percent gains on the call options. <laughs> so I made like a, I made like a hundred and I was up 130% on my call options, which is uh, pretty degenerate. And I wasn't sure to trust it, like, because there's so many other factors that I didn't do. Um, and so I was, I, I ended up closing out most of my position, but I didn't change my lines. I literally just woke up this morning and it was really fascinating to see that. Um, so I sold, I sold up like right here. Mm -hmm. um, most of them. And, uh, just because my guess was that it was going to come out all the way up to this line. But, uh, when it started kind of losing steam, I just like sold, actually I sold somewhere right here, I think. Um, well, even though I made this line, I started looking like as soon as like, there's like some sort of trend, it's like, it's not a psychological level as far as like someone actually, you know, Oh, I suddenly want to buy. No, it's like, there's some sort of algorithm that's, that's, has some target in mind. Well, like you see how many times it interacts with this line. Like I made this line and you can look through my tweets from literally yesterday. Um, it keeps hitting this line, bouncing off this trend line, and then it goes up and then it bounces off and goes right through this decision point right here that I also, um, that I also noticed. And uh, so I knew it, it probably wasn't going to go higher than five because we're um on a wednesday like so so today's uh thursday oh i lost my my screen real, real quick while you're saying that so can so yeah uh, did we post the youtube link as well so folks can watch it on there as well uh you, uh you actually aren't streaming to youtube you you unclicked that before we started did i really oh shit. yeah i'm gonna go ahead and I, I don't think you can start it up right oh, now. Man. I think you have to. Yeah. So maybe yeah. to Sorry about that, everybody. It's just on X today. <laughs> There's something called a. Uh... Anyway. <laughs> um... oh, oops. So. And then, and then what about as far as. Um... So I'm not even going to oh. respond to the chat right now. Are you going to respond to the chat? Just the, that, that chat on the, on the right hand side? Oh, it said, um, oh, just go all in on BT, the max leverage BTC. Oh, I got it. I made it respond now. But keep going. Um, so, I mean, for me, like at the beginning of the week, you know, you have on your call options, you have theta, you know, which is the time um, premium uh, because who knows what's going to happen the rest of the week. But then, you know, at, as you get at, as you get to Friday, when... Um, all the call options end, um, you know, the, the market makers like to push it down. So selling your, your call options on, on Tuesday is probably the best, you know, typically. And, uh, so I, I didn't want to play it too risky, but it, when I looked at the chart and, and different things, not, not just the chart, um, but the failures to deliver the cost to borrow had been spiking and, you know, um, even though Adam Aaron had been had already done two dilutions, I figured there wasn't a di another dilution coming and they might have a profitable quarter, apparently their first profitable quarter coming up. So that was like kind of my thought that and it just was like at some point the market cap is so low that like if an activist investor came in and so that was like my investment thesis and the chart seemed to agree with that. And so that's why, you know, I, I bought in earlier this week and then I bought in more um, right here. Um, but I, yeah, I, I knew that it probably wasn't going to go above five just because they're going to want to push it down by Friday. And mm -hmm. so it's crazy that it hit all these lines, hit this this extra line from a trend that's way far ago, like way far back and then pushed it back down. 
so it's just kind of interesting like um play but it, it ended up netting me like i was i think i had about 900 or 1000 bucks of call options and i ended up getting like 130 percent gains in one week so that, that sounds That's like some nice free launch right there no yeah. uh with, with regards to that for anybody listening looks like um, Bill just reposted us, so now I got 400 oh, dang. members here. So everybody, <laughs> thank you for joining. Um, like I said, for those that, that weren't here, this is our daily stock call. Um, we talk every day at 10.30 a.m. Eastern Time Zone. We talk all things stocks, um, market news, manipulation, you name it, fundamentals. Mike, Michael's more of a, more of a, what would you call yourself, Michael? I mean, retail shareholder, I don't want to say degenerate, but like, you know, uh, the fact that I, my, my strategy, I, I don't have as, as, as much capital to start with. And so it's like, I kind of have to, I'm, I'm, I'm drawn to more like high risk, high, high reward. And so, you know, that means putting a lot more due diligence to be confident in what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not just like, oh, the news told me to buy this. It's like, no, I want to really know, like. Is there, you know, what's the evaluation of the company that compared to everything else in the industry? I, I want to know, like, is there mechanical things? Like, what's the, are there a lot of borrowed shares out there? What's the cost to borrow? You know, are there failures to deliver? I like have to like get all of those to get like, um, to be able to capture these, these movements because, um, you know, I, I definitely don't recommend call options to, to everyone, but when you have a call option and you can, uh, uh, if you know exactly when the the catalyst is going to happen, that gets you the most exposure to upside, right? And so, you know, for me, I've been watching I've been watching AMC for a long time, and I've only really bought in like three times, and I was right two out of those three times, and I made a lot more money than I lost um, both of those times than the one time I didn't um, I wasn't right. So I, it's not like you you just YOLO all your money, but I had you know, in the first one I, I did really well, I, I had like, I ended up like putting like all, like I put like 2,500 bucks into these call options because I thought that the judge was going to reject something called the reverse, uh, the, the conversion. Mm-hmm. And I was right. Um, well, they delayed it. <laughs> then they eventually did it because people can buy out judges apparently. But, um, yeah, but they, you, they, you can buy anything else. It's just it's, it's a function of the price. But in, in short, for, <laughs> for those who just joined, Michael is a, is a more new age investor. Mike is a more, uh, for lack of a better term, <laughs> DGen, but yeah. a, a very smart, well informed DGen. And, and I have a more classical background. I studied finance in Notre Dame, and I did the more traditional route. I, I learned the Buffett the Buffett way. I've actually met um, Buffett and met Charlie Munger um, in person. I did not have like, a deep conversation with, but I was actually able to meet him. Um, so that was a pretty cool experience, but yeah, then I had, uh, once again, a pretty traditional background. I worked at a structured credit hedge fund, the fund of funds, and then some, some short-term private equity stuff before, you know, combining teams with, with Bill. Um, so yeah, so I have a, a super traditional finance background. So I, I come at it from the traditional investor of, of Peter Lynch and Howard Marks and, and Warren Buffett approach of, of long-term fundamental analysis. But, you know, I think the best hybrid is really, or the best approach is really a hybrid, which is you take the new age DGEN with the fundamental approach, right? Like, and you combine the two, I think you can be, you know, supercharged. But, you know, for those folks that just joined, that's kind of the way we're, we're running the show. We're new, this is our third episode in, but but we talk every day and, and, and we love having you guys in here and, and listening and, and learning. And, you know, we want to involve the community. So we're going to bring on a lot of you folks on uh, to learn and listen. Um, something also to be said, we talked about it earlier in the show, but for folks that are just joining, we're going to be running a stock pitch competition type of deal where it's fundamentals against DJs. Um, <laughs> we're going to get a bunch of you guys. I don't know whether it's paper trading account or something else along those lines. We'll figure it out, but we're going to be, you know, competing against uh, each other. So that'd be really fun. So uh, we talk about that in our discord, go ahead and, and, and join that. That's pinned to my link in my bio. Um, and with that, sorry for everybody who was, who was already here and listened to that once, but we had to make sure we shared that with the rest of the class. who showed up late, but, um, yeah, something um, that I think would be pretty interesting today. I don't know if, if a lot of folks saw the lift information. Michael and I were just talking about that. Um, but Lyft just released their earnings the other day, and the CEO actually messed it. Not, not the CEO, the CFO actually messed it up. So the way I understand it, he was supposed to be a 50 basis point increase 
and, and bottom line, but he reported it as a 500 basis point. So that's 5%. And uh, the news just catapulted the stock. But, yeah, so this is, I, I'm just showing the price. You I know, the movement, price right now, I, okay, it's funny, I was actually going to talk about Lyft and Uber because um, they, my wife was telling me, like, oh, they're having a strike you know, for Valentine's day. And I was like, Oh, interesting. Like I'd be kind of interesting to talk about like the, the life cycle of a company. And once they get big enough to where, you know, a strike, you know, seems to happen and, you know, like, um, like unions start forming they take a while to form in the life cycle of a company. And so I was like, Oh, that'd be an interesting obstacle going forward. Um, and so I was going to look it up and actually I'd looked up right, right before, <laughs> Like right before you mentioned it, but I hadn't I hadn't noticed because I thought it said one percent up. And you know, it's actually ten percent up today. Um, and then there was it's forty one percent up on the week. Is there a way? I thought that um here go back to the one day. Yeah. How can we say? Because I know when when the earnings came out a couple of days ago, it it shot way up, and then when they corrected it, it, it came right back down. But it seems like it's since recovered. Um, I mean, it, it came, it went all the way up to, it looks like 1650 and then it went down. Not that much. I mean, so I can pull find, it up on. Yeah. See if you can find a better chart for that. Um, but like, well, while we're on the topic of Lyft, I, I've never understood these companies like a Lyft and, and Uber. How, like literally, how, how is it possible to lose money? If you're running these companies, like quite literally, even before they, I mean, I, I know they're all trying to start to, to get rid of the driver and, and get more automated drivers and they're the ones paying for the cars. But how is it possible to lose billions and billions of dollars when all you're doing is connecting riders to drivers, right? Like what are your major, <laughs> what are your major costs? How do you lose so much freaking money? I, I think, you know, one, there's lawsuits, but two, like, I think that kind of the way is it takes money to make money. And I think that you know, they just inject money in advertising just on the, on the front end, because like if every, like, especially their competition, right? So every day that Uber gets more cemented in as just being, you know, becoming a verb, just being what people are using. Oh, I'm going to Uber to this. Yeah. Um, you know, people want to switch it to, Oh, I'm, I'm getting a lift, you know? And, uh, so I think as far as like deals, they also end up doing a lot of deals with different companies to, like, because I think there's a, a war for subscribers, uh, basically. And, uh, that each company has a set number of subscribers, like it, which makes it more predictable as far as the people investing in it and not just the, the, the shareholders, but the actual, <laughs> um, you know, private equity and whoever else that, that, that has an interest in it. And so they will partner like, so it's like, oh, well, we'll talk to Verizon. Verizon will give a coupon to all their subscribers that they already have. And it, they want everyone to be kind of locked into this kind of monthly fee type thing, or, you know, just because for their accounting, uh, for the business accounting, it works the best. So I think that they lose, they're willing to lose money. Um, in order to pay to get exposure to these subscribers on the front end, hoping that once that pays off, then um, then that money just comes in, like you said, right? There there won't be that there shouldn't be that much overhead. Literally, just connecting drivers to to riders. Well, that's for sure what was happening before, right? I mean, you used to be able to get an Uber or a Lyft, for that matter, for sub twenty bucks or sub even 10 bucks, pretty much anywhere you go. And I think, I think you're right. They were subsidizing investors were subsidizing the, the rides for the shareholders in essence to basically get market penetration and get more folks comfortable with the platform. But then as soon as you get more popular, right, then, you know, everyone wants a piece of the pie, right? So like airports, it's like, okay, well you can only, only rider and, and Uber people can only pick up people in this one area and we're going to make you pay for that to be your designated area. So then it's like, you know, I noticed that having my business, right. You know, as soon as I started making money out of any machine business, like it's just, man, people just come out of the woodworks either like the more people that were around the vending machine, then whoever's surrounding that would be annoyed. Um, and then just anyone that had any sort of claim on the money would, would want 
anyway, so it just became a weird dynamic. And I, now that I think that, um, that Lyft and Uber are becoming so much easier, especially when, when people like, if you like to drink or whatever, you know, and you know, you want to go to a party and you don't, um, want to drunk drive, right? Like, you know, it's just become kind of a way that people do things. And it's even been kind of, you know, lots of videos of people being drunk in an Uber is like a, a whole genre of social media. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like, it's funny because it's like, it's come full circle, right? Like they were there to replace taxis and now they become more taxi like the taxis. Yeah. But, but yeah, I love to kind of dive into this chat and, and hear, I mean, if anybody has an, an opinion on it, who wants to come in and talk about it, do we think this is market manipulation? Do we think that, that this was an intentional move by the CFO? But it's interesting to see that even once he rescinded it, the guidance is not there. The stock is actually up more than what it originally jumped after the initial 500 basis point guidance, which is crazy to me, right? So I don't know if that's like, if that was a, a technique we had talked earlier today, but maybe that was a, a ploy to, to, to short squeeze and, and, and to force a lot of these shorts to cover the, to cover their positions, whether, you know, he's trying to hit his, his stock options and, and, and get the price up where, where they can best. I don't know, but it seems like maybe, maybe the algorithmic traders are taking over. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, you know, and just for anyone new, since Bill shared this, that doesn't know what a short squeeze is, basically you can sell a stock you don't have, you can borrow a stock and sell it, hoping that the price goes down. And then since you borrowed a share, then you can, if the price does go down, then you just give it back. And so, um, but they have a certain amount of margin, like a certain amount, like if the price goes up for the stock, they have to pay it back. And if they don't have enough in their account, then they're forced to buy it. And so it could be that there's like, oh, we're just going to accidentally, you know, release this, put an extra zero and, um, and then revise it. Right. And you, you could say, oh, well, that's market manipulation, but that's literally what the government does every time there's a, a consumer price index. Right. Or every time there's a jobs report, especially like, like every single jobs report has been revised and like way down like it's like oh we got all these new jobs and then and then they revise it like a week later when no one's like paying attention and they're like oh actually we didn't <laughs> so it's like it's weird that it's industry standard to do manipulation yeah it's just, but it's just like, a matter of not getting caught it's, but it's like wild. is it is but it, it, see, it, see, it seems like it's the same trend every time which is like we know it's coming we know it's coming. We know exactly what it's going to be like, but we still can't do anything about it. I, mean, I even think, I mean, you know, I'm not affiliated at all with it. Don't, don't, you know, I, I mean, but, whatever. but, but, but the apps, the Epstein stuff, right? Remember how big of a deal that was for how long it was, right? Like, nobody yeah. talks about it. Nobody talks, but the list came out and it's, it's old news. It's yesterday's news. It seems like that's the way they do this is yeah. they just don't admit to anything, right? Some the craziest stuff comes out. They don't admit to anything. And then if they just wait enough time, people just forget about it. Yeah, like I mean, the CEO of Google is still crazy. missing a crazy. year and a half. He's missing. He's been subpoenaed for the Jeffrey Epstein thing. He's still missing. People think like, oh, maybe like the Epstein thing wasn't a big deal. It's like, okay, well then, where's the CEO of Google? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But people forget about that, right? It's not newsworthy. And like, even like, I mean, I can't imagine somebody like cr crazy, crazy famous. Even still, it's like if enough time passes by, people forget about it. So I don't know. I mean, even with the game, I mean, the, even the GameStop stuff, right? Like there's a certain cohort of people who, who still care about it, but you know, as, as a mass, like people really don't talk about it. It's not really in the news a whole lot anymore. You know, even with uh, the Bed Bath & Beyond stuff, I, I hope it doesn't take the same trajectory, but if history tells us anything, it seems like maybe it's just going to be one of those things where it gets brushed under the rug and people forget about it. So I think that's, you know, and even more important for us to continue to, to keep the pan hot and, and, and keep the conversation hot and stay on them. I think we kind of assume that our leaders are competent because it's like, well, they wouldn't be able to stay in power if they weren't competent. Right. And it's like, no, they're just really, really corrupt. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was listening to a conversation about like Elon Musk and uh, the Chancery judge um, in, in Delaware, you know, blocked, you know, a pay package that um, got approved, I think all the way back in 2008 or 2018. 
and um, you know, just because the price surged so much, um, because he added so much value to the company, they thought, oh, well, now that's too much money, right? Like to be paid, and um, so he moved, not of Tesla, but he they might he moved to start uh, SpaceX and uh, Neuralink out of Delaware, um, and they were saying, well, the shareholders voted it in by eighty percent, but it's it's also interesting that. At that time, you know, BlackRock was like one of the biggest, you know, owners of Tesla. And we know that they like to just manipulate all the voting, right? And so it's like they were then, when they thought Elon was one of them, they were willing to give him whatever pay package, you know, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. possible. And now he's not. Now he's not. Not one of us. And they're going to cancel the Illuminati. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I mean, like, I think people think that that kind of stuff doesn't matter. And it's like, well, we live in a rule of law land where it's like a contract's a contract, you know, and do we want that? Like if the contract is, you know, can be val- invalidated by like turning off the buy button, for instance, with GameStop, like that's, uh, that's messed up, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's a gray area, but it's not really that gray. It's, it's pretty black and white to my, in my opinion. But I think like like something that I've noticed, and um, even on like a small scale, small scale uh, disincentives and and not, I don't want to go up, straight up call it corruption, but it's almost to that level. Like I know a friend of mine um, whose family's you know not to call moderate anything along those lines, but family a friend of mine whose family's in billboards, and um, you know with billboards like people really don't want billboards. You know they're kind of an eyesore. Um, they're expensive. They're, in some ways, they're kind of dangerous, but you know, it's like it's, it's kind of tacky. So a lot of communities are voting against billboards, and he's out there lobbying with not like big time politicians, but local politicians, right? Like your state senators, your state reps, your state whatever it is, right? Like, and he's lobbying big time with those guys. And the funny thing is, is that like I think Elon Musk actually talked about it's like it's cheaper to do it that way, right? Like mm-hmm. you can get more bang for your buck going for the local guys. So you can actually get more done. Um, and the, and the tough part about it is like it's framed very much as as legal, right? Like and like even if you even if you you know, don't take it directly for like money for this, you can't deny, right? Like a great book everybody should read is like called um, the Psychology. I think it's Influence by Robert Caldini. It's a great book that talks about human psychology and the biases of human psychology. And um, one of the psychology talks about is the gift giving, right? So like if I give you something. You feel like you have to give me something back, whether you admit whether we went into an agreement or not, right? So these folks who are giving money to politicians, whether they will admit it or not, politicians are generally going to feel like they have to give something back, right? So like I, I worry more about like small scale influence, small scale corruption, uh, and those kind of um, feedback effects on you know up the food chain. Actually, it's funny that you mentioned billboards because uh, you know my dad says he has a he knew someone that. Uh, they went and bought all of the billboards, I don't know, somewhere on the West Coast. I don't, I don't remember where. And um, like paid millions of dollars to buy every single billboard. Mm-hmm. And then he lobbied against billboards yeah, and made the yeah. government buy it for a higher price. And it just like, you know, I, I think that it's like that's, you know, I like the free market, um, you know. But the free market when it's free, when it's free. But like the you know, there's ways to make money that just, it's like, is that, you know, a waste of resources, right. To build all these billboards and then tear them down. And in that process of wasting all those resources, just give one random person that like figured out the loophole, like a bunch of money, Mm -hmm. like you're, you're then kind of giving money to the person that's finding the loopholes to waste resources. It just seems kind of, kind of odd. Yeah. I think building something of, of value is actually really hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, of, of substantive value, right? Substantive value yeah. that provides value to society. Like, like I said, I am a huge opponent against folks who are just moving money around and, and making money, doing other things like that, and not creating any value, right? Like financial engineering, I think is 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 a useless skill to society, and there are a lot of folks who've made a lot of money doing that. And I think you could even extend that to like once again the billboard industry. It's hilarious. It's hilarious. These guys will lobby and say, "Let me build a billboard here. Let me build a billboard here. This is how it's going to benefit the community. This is how it's going to drive economic stimulus. This is why it's going to improve tax revenue." Blah 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 blah. And then the minute they get their billboard, they say, 
On second thought, no, no, you shouldn't let anybody. There's too many billboards already. You shouldn't let anybody else build them, right? Once they, they, they yeah. basically are effectively trying to create their own monopoly. And you can see that across a billion different other industries. Um, you know, another obvious example, um, I was talking to a private equity from way back when, and one of the industries they invested in was the fishing industry. And the fishing industry was basically set up in a way where you, like, there was a certain group of people who were grandfathered into these licenses, and they were the only ones that could go out and fish at these times and fish at this amount, right? And they had this massive monopoly. And really all that is, it's a tax on us as consumers. It's a tax on us as consumers propped up by the government implementing these, these, these BS monopolies because of special interests. And it's terrible, and it's terrible. You know, it's like monopolies aren't aren't a function of a free market economy. They're a function of corrupt politicians misincentivized by uh, lobbyists. Yeah, it's funny you bring it up because I actually live kind of by, by the American River and I, I like fishing. Um, yeah. And so, man, like the salmon come up the river from the ocean to to spawn. Right. And, uh, you know, lay their eggs and then, you know, so. It's like if you didn't regulate it at all, people would just literally like just net all of the salmon and then there just wouldn't be any. It's like crazy, you know, even as it is, people get arrested all the time. <laughs> like I even know all the spots where, you know, you see them and, they, you know, anyway, they have no idea like how serious uh, the fishing game takes that kind of stuff. But uh, it's like it's like weird. Like, how do we have a, a structure for an economy that that both doesn't centralize the power so much that like the one person at top can get bought out, mm -hmm. but also doesn't decentralize it so much that no one can do anything, you know, mm -hmm. I think yeah. we should. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's, there, there's a level, like, I think like, I don't know. I, I used to binge watch Milton Friedman. Videos, and I don't know if folks know who that is, but he's a really famous economist. He was in like the Reagan era. I think he was the main proponent or the main uh, brainchild behind Reaganomics. Um, and his whole thing was like, a government should be set up in a way where like there's rule and order and, and law, but that's it. Right. And then it should be, it should function in, in a way that, that naturally happens, but like you shouldn't allow for bad acts. You shouldn't allow for people to cheat, steal, kill, whatever. Right. But like fundamentally the government shouldn't be as involved as it is in, in the economy. Um, but like the, the, the trouble is, is that like it gets propped up with good intentions, right? Like all these programs seem like they have good intentions and they get framed and it's really just a, an informational psyop, right? Like I'm sure with, with the billboard, right? Like when he, when he says, my friend, when he says, oh, we don't need any more billboards, right? It sounds great. It's like, oh, wow, like these are hurting the community and blah, 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 blah. But in reality, the real reason is because he wants the monopoly. So I think that that's what makes it so hard for a lot of these um, government entities is like, they, they get propped up and, and you, you see the, the, the one morsel or more morsel of a good thing and, and you, you ignore the 99 other second order consequences. Wait, do you do you like Milton Freeman? I do. I'm a huge Milton Freeman guy. I, I wow. Totally watch I'm, videos. I'm very against Milton Freeman. We should really? have a, Yeah. Why is that? Let's hear it. See, there we go. This, this is <laughs> the DJs against the fundamentals. <sighs> I, I mean, I, you're, not, you're not a Marxist, are you, Michael? No. Oh my God. Just because I don't like, uh, you know, cartel, financial cartels. <laughs> um, no, I mean, uh, I think that, um, so there's, you know, and this is something Ryan Cohen, you know, tweets about a lot, right. Is actually economic policy. And it's kind of surprising to me that people don't kind of pick up on it, but there's like a laissez faire, um, economics versus uh, Keynesian economics, Keynesian saying like, you just throw money in a certain direction and people are going to follow it. Right. And so we see that governments give these huge contracts to companies and, you know, we don't, and, and, and it stimulates the market and we don't care why it stimulated or the cost that it stimulates it. Um, but the laissez affair is like, look, like the government should stay out of it. It shouldn't be stimulating the money, the, the market with money. And, you know, so all the people surrounding Milton Friedman, and I'd have to, uh, I've just been digging deeper into it, but, um, yeah, it does. It is more of a, a chronic capitalism. So I agree with DK, uh, over there, but, uh, we'll, we'll maybe we'll have it set up a more formal debate. I'll, I'll make sure I, I, uh, <laughs> get a lot down, but I, I definitely feel passionate about it. Also definitely not a Marxist. <laughs> there you go. But well, yeah. uh, although, I mean, in, in that defense, right. So one thing, you know, and I'm not a Marx expert is he says that people fetishize um, 
you know, money. Mm -hmm. And so like, you know, they, it's like money is what, what should be going in between a trade. So it's like you produce something, someone else produces something and, and you need some way. Cause it's like, if I have chickens and you have cows, I, I want to, I need some way to trade you one chicken and trade other people, a bunch of chickens for just part of a cow. And so money is what kind of it holds that value so that we can trade. And, you know, it shouldn't be for trying to steer the country in a certain direction. It should be to be able to keep trading consistent. And so I think that the Milton Friedman kind of gang of people, the, um, oh, oh, it wasn't the Chili Boys. What were, what were they called? Because uh, he did a lot of policy in Chile, right? Uh, the Chicago Boys. Anyway, um yeah, that whole Chicago boys and Milton Freeman is the center of that is, you know, kind of started some pretty odd things in my opinion. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I, I just, I just think that like the, that money has a certain um, role, right. And yet the way within this stimulus kind of mentality and all that, it puts money into certain places. And like, let's say that the, the government says, Oh, well, we like the, you know, we like Uber's policy more than Lyft and we're going to give them, you know, a billion dollars, right? That completely will destroy Lyft, right? If Uber got a billion dollars. Um, and uh, so, you know, then you, you, but you're like in reality, right? So who did the government give $50 billion to in the chips mark in the chips act? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most of it went to Intel. Why Intel? Because all the other people you know, NVIDIA, AMD, Apple, they all use TSMC, which is in Taiwan, right? So it, it, it that $50 billion they gave it in, I don't know, 2022, I think, it, they said they're not going to be up and going until 2025. So all the factories they're building, you know, so as of right now, all everyone's chips rely on Taiwan and, you know, the, the, the tensions there and, um, you know, as far as international affairs go. So, you know, the government's then going to try and sway like the free market to say, hey, we're just going to support Intel. And at some point, um, that's going to like once they are all their um, um, their new fabrication um, buildings and, and, and everything is going to, in 2025 is going to be a real rival to AMD and NVIDIA. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's, it's an interesting thing. And, and once again, we keep using the, the term free, 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 but, um, you know, it's, it's very clear that, um, the free market is, is only as free as the government lets it be and the special interest let it be. Um, I'm going to send the chat here because it seems like some folks want to join guys. I just sent the, 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 the link to join in the chat. Um, let's see if people can join it. Can you can you see me type it in the chat? Dan, I, Daniel Benjamin says he wants to see Stephen and Bill in a boxing match. I think I'm in a different weight class than Bill, so I I think I could take him. I don't think that's a fair fight. Bill's 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 smarter than me, but I but I'm bigger than him, so he's he, he's I'll my I'll big boy, but, I, but I'm the one that I, I'm the one I used, to, him. <laughs> I used to do wrestling and did a little bit of boxing, but. Actually, I probably shouldn't do boxing because I've already had way too many concussions. <laughs> I used uh, to race motocross <laughs> and uh, also do other stuff like wakeboarding and stuff. So I've uh, definitely had way more concussions than any human should have. <laughs> um, Mike, can you can you throw the the guest chat, whatever, in the, on on the Twitter feed or whatever, and see if because I think some people want to join. Um, I mean, they should be able to. Oh, I mean, you can just comment it on the next post. Okay, I'll just. I'm not. I'm, I'm not logged in on mine. We just. We just posted on mine on the tweet that I have we sure. have live. All right. Oops. I would love. I, I would love to see a. a I don't, I don't know who's some other, maybe we could do a little celebrity boxing match between Bill and I. Yeah. But I mean, even boxing, right? You're not allowed to punch someone in the back of the head. 
or in the or in the nuts, right? Uh, so it's like how what are the rules that make something like work? Because like obviously if you were in a real fight, you're gonna do all the things that <laughs> you shouldn't do in a, a regular boxing match, right? It just completely changes the game. And so people are always looking for that 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 edge, um, that loophole they can exploit. And nice kind of comes at yeah, a cost a, an interesting thought i was i had i don't know if anybody's ever i'm sure someone said it is it's something i've learned um so something i learned is, is there's no there's no new thoughts anymore everybody said the same thought in just a different way or or before um but something that i thought and maybe just bring that to everybody's attention is like really like firms like citadel and, and other market makers i mean they're really just like bookies when you really think about it uh, they're just taking their piece on the top and when they need to balance the book they need to balance the book and they never want to pay out that that million dollar bet if they don't have to so you yeah. know they're gonna weaponize it against you as much as they can but we know this we know this so you know we're, we're willing participants we are we though like if you don't have an option that is that, that is a true point is do you have an option I mean, like, that's the thing is, is that it takes money to make money. And so when you can control who can get a loan, right? So it's like, you get people like, I mean, I think of the best example is like three, three arrows capital, right? Like, yeah. mm -hmm. they got a loan. And they're like, our, our business plan is we're gonna buy Bitcoin. Okay, cool. Bitcoin's pretty cool, I guess. Um, and then they use that collateral of Bitcoin to get another loan to buy more bitcoin that was just like their whole business model like they literally didn't do anything else and then what do you know it all collapsed so it's like i think like access to loans right like you know i mean for me that you know i remember um right, right now the, the interest rates are higher but go back right before just right before they started going up last year uh no oh shoot man time has been flying anyway um 2022 right the best loan I could get was like, like 9% for like a, a federal subsidized loan or um, up to, I think it was like 14% or whatever for a personal loan what, that they, they wanted to charge me, right? 14%. Whereas I know people that were getting 1% loans just because they already had a lot of money. And I was like, how is that fair that they're basically getting fair. free money? And it's the same, it's the same thing. Once again, that same example that I gave with mobile home parks happens across every industry, across every country, across every specific sector. That's it. That's just how it goes. You know what I mean? And, and the rich want to get richer and, and everybody's selfish and, and it's, it's a sad reality. And I think a lot of folks would be a lot happier if, if they learn to give more. Like that's something that, that Bill has realized my family has realized is, is, you know, you, you can have a bigger house, but. It, it has the same stuff, you know, everybody for the most part, like we found like, it's, it's funny enough, like, I don't know if a lot of folks have a big house or not. My house is that I just bought is not a big house. It's like 1300, 1400 square feet. So it's just a little, it's a little micro house. But what I found is that, you know, growing up in a big house, um, most of the time is, is really spent in like one of two rooms. It's either you're in the kitchen or you're in your bedroom. That's pretty much it. You're either in the kitchen or your bedroom. And, and we had a little like TV alcove that we'd watch um you know movies and shows and but that's that's pretty much it you know like you don't really need the massive great room or the piano room or the library or the lanai or whatever you want to call it you know the, I, I call it the fancy rooms i call it the pretty room so it, you, the only purpose is for it to look pretty the lanai what even is that uh, exactly all these all these fancy stupid terms that they had to come <laughs> up with because they they ran out of actual practical rooms so they had to come up with ridiculous terms but yeah I, I think a lot of people would realize that you know greed um you know is is a is a road that leads really nowhere yeah. but anyways what up richie richie and i have been been, been commenting a lot on twitter twitter richie's in the in the discord right? what's up fellas hey, what's up, um hey michael um sorry guys i don't i don't really have a clue how to use this thing um we can hear you just fine you're locked and loaded awesome um, and then as far as the discord goes too, I'm not really, sh I'm not familiar with discord at all. I, I jumped in there a bit ago, um, but I'll find my way around and, uh, get to know it for sure. I know uh, it looks like you have a special guest as well. I do. He's got, he's got a, a runny nose right now, but, uh, 
but yeah, I got my kids running around, so I'll probably have to mute my mic. They'll start screaming as, as you know, as soon as I start talking about anything. I'm gonna sit up here with Dan. Ask him, ask him what he thinks about the market manipulation and and the effects of of micro incentives and the feedback yes. throughout the rest of the economy. I'd love to hear his thoughts. Well, and whether he's a Milton Friedman guy. Yeah, whether he's a Milton Friedman. Is, does he watch Milton Friedman? What's what, what's your son's name? Um, let's just say his initials are GME. Oh, that's what, no that's what, way. He, that's what he thinks but, about the market. That's hardcore. <laughs> Sounds like a smart man. But his name's Graham. You say hi. Nice. The, the prof yeah. says, "Let the kids speak." <laughs> um, hey, I missed I missed the beginning of the show, but I, I heard you about half halfway through say something about uh, competition. W- what's going on with that? Yeah, so that's that's something new. Um, it's it's in the idea phase right now, but we'll likely definitely follow through with it. Um, I think it's it's going to be something along the lines of where whoever wants to compete can sign up. We're going to do some version of a paper trading. Um, and then the folks who win the paper trading um, will hypothetically be able to either get a, a big prize or they'll, they'll potentially get some money um, of, of mine or something else to, to go in and help manage a run or, and get a percentage of. So like I said, that, 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 that's all ideas. Uh, you know, we're not committing to anything yet, but um, until, until we got stuff down on paper, I think it could be pretty exciting to get folks involved and and um, you know the 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 name of it would be the DJs versus the, the fundamentals. Yeah, because like I mean, I think there's a lot of people that are in a similar position to me, right? Where I had a, a, a kind of an options account, I had like maybe less than eight hundred dollars in there, um, like a couple weeks ago, and I was able to. I'm up to like forty five hundred bucks in there right now, and so. You know, but like if it's if I would have made those same plays and I felt confident, I I would have put more money if I had more money in those plays, um, then I could have just amplified that money. And so it might be kind of an on ramp to uh, just giving people if they are good at trading more money to be able to increase their wealth faster. Yeah, we made we uh, somebody just commented with BBBY beyond this paper trading. I think BBBY would be an unfair advantage because I think uh, that's that's too obvious of a winner. So we, we may have to ban folks from being able to choose that. <laughs> get bonds. <laughs> yeah, get bonds exactly. Although everyone would have the same sort of if like you have multiple people with the same, same the exact same they, account. Yeah. Everybody all all, all yeah. in one hundred percent leverage in BBBY. <laughs> there be there be no competition. We would all just be. <laughs> for me as as far as actual stocks though the ones i'm i'm looking at actually um there's some that i'm interested in so for me like i because there's so much market manipulation and like gauging the premium is so hard i i like ones that are just like kind of objectively undervalued um you know i've been watching a couple that i think are interesting i don't know if right now is necessarily the right entry point but I just sold my Weight Watchers calls that I had and I bought more. I sold them yesterday morning and bought um, AMC calls and then I sold my, all my AMC calls. So, um, of course, after I sell Weight Watchers, it then runs a bit, but it's kind of it's it's price, in my opinion, was at it usually was somewhere between like seven and ten dollars per share and they haven't diluted in their not going to dilute i'm sure because they're they're they've been profitable for for a while um like i i think that the amount of subscribers they have and with their earnings it will probably go somewhere back to seven or ten dollars um so i currently don't have a position but i probably will soon maybe next early next week because i like to wait for the options to get crushed on friday and then either pick them up on Friday or Monday morning. So that's that's one I'm watching. And then another one I'm watching is um, Spirit Airlines. That one's um, a little more uncertain when it's what it's going to do. Weight Watchers one seems like it's like the earnings is probably going to be good uh, to do more research on it, though. Um, I currently when I sold my AMC, I bought just GME shares because I think uh, something soon is going to happen with that. And uh 
Oh, we got we got Keenan and I not to cut you off, but we got Keenan and Eric on. Hey, Keenan, Keenan, go for it. What's up? Oh, not much. What's I just up? wanted to check in because I uh, I've been watching this since you just started it. Um, I my portfolio legit consists of GME. <laughs> beyond, to be honest, so I don't really have any input on this conversation, but uh, I just, just wanted to tune in. I just want to tune in. You just want to show everybody your face. That's <laughs> Look at this guy. What's Did you up, say your Michael? portfolio is just GME? Is that you said? Yeah, just just GME. It, it was nice. Bed Bath and Beyond. That, that's a little yeah. too diversified for me, honestly. <laughs> I like to take I like to take a little more concentrated <laughs> positions. <laughs> I'm all about the tin foil, man. Oh my god, that RC tweet last night was getting me. Well, it says 16. 16. I mean, hopefully, that's February 16th. That'd be great. <laughs> I think the 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 iPhone 16 tweet was referring to the 16B lawsuit. Uh, perhaps yeah. it's very predictable that it's going to be dismissed, right? Um, during during a space call with Zoltar as well, right? Like. He has the crystal ball in his. Uh oh. We lose him. Um, to add on to the AM or to the to the GME, I really do. Th oh, oh, you're back. What were we gonna say? Crystal ball. You, you said did something. I? Uh, did I cut out? Yeah, you you cut out. Or after you said crystal ball. Or before you said crystal ball. <laughs> Um, but with GME, I think somebody's that trying they have... somebody's trying to rock Keenan right now. He's gonna, he's, he's trying to raise the grade. <laughs> yeah. I think and that they're he's ready gone. to. Can we get a wellness check on Keenan after this, please? <laughs> we gotta make sure he's doing all right. Maybe he's with Plur. I see, I see Eric, by the way. Eric, are you? You want to talk or just, just hang out? Let, let, let us look your profile picture. You, just just to make sure for anybody who needs and wants to come on, you have to give the right permission. So you have to like let them, you know, when you come on, it'll oh, yeah. it'll say, do you want to let restream get access to your microphone and camera? You got to make sure you click yes on that. I think his is set. You might have to make, check sure make sure it's the right microphone. You can hit the cog wheel and um, select your your microphone there. I think for GME though, I think they have GameStop Player which is like a game launcher and I, th I think for game streaming. And I think that that relies on the X app doing uh, money transfers, right? So once they can do tipping and, you know, transfer money on, on X, which they should have already had. So I think a lot of the tinfoil was leading to a date being sooner than now. But I guess California and some other states are dragging their feet, along with like the politics being able to affect business at such a high scale, right? So I'm sure Elon, right, if he was expecting to have that feature months ago, that's like a lot of money, millions, possibly billions of dollars that that of opportunity costs that he he lost just because regulators wanted to, you know, have their political bias. So, but I think as soon as that launches, then the GameStop player app will also launch because they got rid of their NFTs at the same time as, as X did and T zero gained, you know, so I think that having T zero and GameStop will be integrated right into X when they do game streaming and video streaming. Uh, and that will be huge. And so as soon as that happens, the revenue that's going to come into GameStop is going to be huge. They were Ryan Cohen's plan was to make it a tech company. He, he wasn't, his end goal was not just to have, you know, brick and mortar stores that sell, you know, physical devices. And so I think that's the thing is, is we, it, it'll just happen all at once, right? All of a sudden they launch it and boom, the price is just going to jump. And when the price jumps, then the shorts are also going to be squeezed. And so for me, that's why I like having exposure to, to GameStop, right? Shares or calls. Um, right now I have a few calls, but mostly just shares, uh, is, is in my opinion, uh, a good idea right now. People want to know if somebody comment about the icon and, um, JetBlue. Um, I, I haven't seen any new updates on it. Um, 
still staying tuned on that, but no, no, no update as of now. What do you guys think the EPS is going to come in at on GME for earnings? Positive, probably barely positive. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> I mean, like, that's the thing is, is their model, like, I think that their their main source of revenue that they're banking on hasn't happened yet. So they I think they're still going to utilize those physical stores for, you know, um, kind of like Amazon has Amazon lockers and they have returns with Kohl's and 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 uh, your grocery store, Whole Foods. Right. So I think that that the actual GameStop locations are going to serve that purpose when Teddy um, or butter DK butterfly comes, comes in, you know, the, the Amazon competitor, but yeah, I think that that's, uh, so I think the, the physical locations are going to be valuable, but what the physical locations are going to do is going to change. People want to know what's going on with rumble. Do you guys have an opinion? Well, I mean, I think that Rumble and DWAC are both ones that whenever Trump does anything good, the, they go up. Um, it's kind of hard to, for me. Rumble has been like, I knew it was going to jump. I thought about what time did it start running? Was it this morning? Um, I thought about playing it because I saw DWAC. Um, it's actually, I think it's in 20, well, in aftermarket last night, DWAC. Um, ran. And so I was like, oh, well, Rumble's probably going to run as well. Um, just because like free um, free speech, right? That YouTube, the more YouTube censors, the more Rumble is going to go up. I don't know how many people are using Rumble yet. Um, kind of like True Social. I don't know how many people are using True Social. I don't know what all DWAC is actually planning to acquire, but uh, they are correlated with. Uh, you know how well Trump does. So, <laughs> what up? Hey guys, how we doing today? Uh, and Michael, I love it. Let's go rumble, man. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's been a fun for, for me lately. I don't have much to yeah. add. I, I mean, I'm just jumping in. I, I had a jumping a in and say hi. Is, is is that a turtle in the background? What is that? Uh, no, it's a bearded dragon. Two a of bearded them. Bearded dragon. Yeah, kids love them. <laughs> Because and they're cool pets. I was never a reptilian guy, but uh, the wife brought one home, and then somehow it turned into two. But they're fun. They're good. They're they're, they're cool. I like them. But funny enough, my, my very first pet was a was a leopard gecko. The name Jimbo. Cool. And um, I have a funny story. So I was I was like playing with them. I don't know if you can play with lizards like that, but I was playing with them, and I was playing with them on my floor. Guys like hang them out, watch them run around. I love feeding them the little flies. And one time I like, tried to like grab them and his like tail popped off. Oh, no. I like freaking out. I thought yeah, like, I, would freak out I, thought, I was like, what the heck? It's like a, a little eleven year old at this point. I was like, I was like freaking out. And, and the tail, like I don't know if anybody's ever seen a lizard tail fall, but it's like flopping around. <laughs> it's like, flopping around while he's running away from the tail. It was crazy. I felt like I killed my it's a traumatizing experience for me. Hopefully, you didn't have similar one, but did it grow right back? Yeah, it, I saw it, it did grow right back. It didn't grow right. It took a while. It took like months for the thing to grow back. He had a little stub for a while. I felt bad for him. <laughs> but <laughs> so was, Mags was, yesterday like was on, on eleven thirty or so called um, out big lots, which like I actually thought anyway because they've been attacked by the same people as far as the least buybacks. So I just bought a couple of five cent calls and uh, yeah, I might actually make a decent amount of money that I just bought $10 worth of call options just to be part of it to, I don't know, um, join the fun with mags and, you know, definitely glad I did. No, another win for team DJ. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. seriously. <laughs> what, do, what do you guys think of this King season? I, I tend to agree with that. I think a lot of times with well, options, I mean, you don't necessarily have a need to be right on the thesis if the underlying lines up in a way you i think you can take advantage of that uh i agree i've heard the similar <clears throat> and i'm new to not new but I, I don't have a whole bunch of experience in options but i know theta gang is a real thing and um 
especially with the low IV as well. There's, you know, services like Tasty Trace that kind of play off those, um, those methods. So with Rumble, I was going to buy some this morning because, but, um, because DWAC ran, but the problem with Rumble is like the market cap is already kind of high, but also it seems like the shorts are kind of trapped in there, even though the short interest isn't that high, the cost to borrow is relatively high. And so I don't know if it's going to keep running because of that. Like it started getting scary for me after $7. That was when I sold, well, actually sold before that. Um, so I, I don't know, it, it could keep running, but the reason I didn't buy any this morning was because it had already ran like 4% and, you know, who knows whether I should have bought some, but <laughs> are you still, you're still in it rock up. Oh, you're muted. Good looking out. Hey, thank you. No, but I, I am still in it. Um, you know, got started, like, I was ready to drag it. But yeah, no, exactly. Um, you know, it's, he's my financial advisor, but uh, I just let him I throw the tickers on the ground, whichever one he strolls to. Let's go. Did, 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 didn't they do that with like a dog a couple years ago and the dogs beat like 50% of the hedge funds? I would not doubt it. I think I saw something about that. They, like they had like a dog pick random ones and it, it beat a couple of the hedge I'm sure well, it's that's certainly hedge- better than Kramer. That's because the hedge funds like are probably like they can make money making it go down and then have just like, you know, they have ways of uh, like attacking a company and then using warrants later. So it's like looks like they lost a lot of money. But then all of a sudden, you know, after they exercise their warrants, after they've like beat seller box to uh, a company, then they somehow made a ton of money. That's tax free. <laughs> So I know that just made me think your dog, the, the, the dogs being the hedge funds. I was like, yeah, it's yeah, probably yeah. just the way is secretly, you know, it's like, oh, we're not making that much money, but you know, we know they are. <laughs> well, so, all right, everybody. I think that, that that's it for today. Unless we had any other thoughts, Rock, thanks for joining us. No, yeah. And I'll quickly mention on Rumble uh, for those interested, there is a hearing um, this Friday that they're involved in uh, a free speech hearing and the outcome of that may have some effects. So Friday something I'm looking to, I'm just checking their press releases on their website to catch an update on the court hearing Friday. But it was them. Uh, they have a lawyer representing Rumble and another uh, company, Locals. Uh, and I don't have total details. But yeah, I'm just curious to see what, what comes out of that ruling. We'll s- slate that for Friday. Let's get on. Let's talk about it. Yeah, I mean, I can pull it up. Uh, just give me one second. I just wasn't prepared. I mean, what... Um... I wonder what, uh, like, w- what would make R- uh, Rumble take off? Like, I know they had Rumble Studios came out, and that was also correlated with a jump. That yeah, you, you, could... you saw a 30% yeah. jump when they launched Studio Day After, and you saw a 30% jump when they announced the Dave Portnoy um, partnership. Because we, using Restream, right, if... Uh, I haven't looked into it, but if, if Rumble Studio can allow you to stream to several different platforms, you I mean, can. I noticed that Restream doesn't have the server capacity to really, like a lot of times my video doesn't even come in all the way just because um, there's so much uh, latency due to um, just the bandwidth that Restream offers. So if Rumble has bigger servers and can handle you know, broadcasting better, you know, you know, we might switch to rumble studio instead of, uh, you know, restream and probably other people do the same. Yeah. I, I, I want to do the same. I, I've yet to uh, experience uh, rumble studio yet. And so on, you know, I used to stream just occasional games, things like that, but I do want to check it out to see what its capabilities are and see what it has to offer. Um, it is new. So, uh, there's not a lot of news on it yet. But this oral, so I have it pulled up in front of me, this press release, it's just going over um, in Florida, they have an appeal with the Second Circuit to hear oral arguments on on behalf of the First Amendment. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm trying to TLDR this in, on the fly. 
Well, I mean, you look at how much governments can shut things down. I mean, even like, you know, um, Grok from X, right? The AI, right? Like it can access, you know, live data. And, you know, I guarantee the government's trying to shut that down. Uh, so if they do, right, like that's like they can they can make it impossible to make money with their policies, you know. Just yeah, like they so did with FTX, they made it impossible. They regulated all the other competition out of out of the space, so that FTX was the only one, because uh, Gary Gensler has you know direct connections to FTX. Yeah, so it looks like there was a ruling before there, and it was appealed that this is over. Um, the Rumble and locals sued the state of New York after it enacted a law that forced websites to respond, address, and handle protected speech that someone somewhere finds humil humiliating or vilifying toward a group of, based on race, color, religion. So, yeah, free speech. Um, obviously, I think we're all fans of free speech, and I think with a ruling that supports free speech, you, you'd probably see some um, reflection in the stock price. So... I mean, I guess the, the question is, so, so for, for me, we could kind of figure out like, well, what's the chance? Like looking at the Elon Musk case, right? It turns out that that judge in the Elon Musk case is the same, um, in the same chance, like she was appointed by the same person as the person who ruled on the AMC conversion, which I thought was really corrupt. So two corrupt rulings um, from the, they were appointed by the same senator um, who's, you know, a Democrat, whether that's worth anything or not. Um, and so the question then would be, who's the, you know, what's the motivation of the judge that's ruling in this case? Like, would they side with censorship or would they side with free speech? You know, from what I read, they they expect the to side with the rumble and free speech. Um, they think it's frivolous um from what i'm reading so we'll see you know i'm gonna keep my eyes peeled for friday and see what turns out uh, i do need to take off though i'm up against the clock I, I have to get to work here soon so i gotta jump in the shower but hey thanks for the link uh and i will definitely be back in the future to uh help you guys out sounds right, good sounds good. live 10 30 eastern every day yes sir i'll be here next week we're gonna be in uh i'm gonna be in utah so we may end up running the stream a little earlier a little later but yeah have a great trip when you guys go Shooting guys, unless, unless, unless I could, I don't know what the connection is going to be like on the hill. I could be skiing while, while streaming. I, I, I would do it if it, if, it, if it increased viewership, if it helped people make money. I would do it. There you go. That's That's fine. Fine. Thanks again. Uh, fun conversation today. Thanks for everybody that joined, and uh, we will see you again tomorrow. All right. See ya. Thanks.